eye drops for glaucoma can be pretty overwhelming. In today's video, I'm gonna go over the most commonly used glaucoma eye drops, how they should be used, and some of the important things that you need to know about each and every single one of them. Hi everyone, my name is Dr. Saya Nagori. I'm a board certified ophthalmologist. I am also a fellowship trained glaucoma specialist and you're watching the ifax.com channel. On this channel, we talk about all things related to eye health, eye beauty, and glaucoma since it is my specialty. So if you wanna learn more about that, be sure to hit like and subscribe below. So let's dive in. The first drop I wanna talk about is Latanoprost. Latanoprost is in a category of drugs called prostaglandin analogs. Other drops that are in this category include the Mataprost as well as Travaprost. Some of the brand names of these drops include Zalatan, Travatan, and Lumigan. So there's a big variety in terms of which one you might be on, but generally the properties of all of them are pretty similar. Now these drops are important to know about because they are often considered first line treatment for glaucoma patients. And what that means is that if someone is newly diagnosed with glaucoma, a lot of glaucoma doctors and ophthalmologists will put patients on these drops to start with. Another first line treatment for glaucoma is called SLT laser and there's another video on the channel all about SLT laser which you can watch if that is something that you have been offered. Now the most important thing to know about these types of eye drops is that prostaglandin analogs like latanoprost are typically taken at night before bed. The reason is this helps to blunt the natural eye pressure spike that happens while you are sleeping. Now, the drop can also make your eye red. So a lot of doctors will recommend taking it at night so when your eye turns red, you're sleeping and it's not something that people are really gonna notice. Now also, if you notice your eyelashes getting a little bit longer, this is also a common side effect that most people don't really mind. There is a caveat though in patients who have light colored eyes, especially patients who have hazel colored eyes. In these patients, it is more likely for a drop like latanoprost to make the eye color actually change and if it does change it's actually a permanent change so i always counsel patients who have this kind of light colored eyes or a mixed color in their eyes that this could be an issue and maybe we should consider a different eye drop instead or consider doing the laser. Now, another issue that can happen with latanoprost with long-term use, and it usually happens after a few years, is periorbital fat atrophy. What that means is the fat that is around your eyes can actually start to atrophy, and which means that it's going to start looking sunken in a little bit. This can be cosmetically disfiguring depending on the degree of which it happens, but this is typically with really long-term use and it is less with latanoprost than it is with some of the other options out there. So now that we've gotten sort of the things that you need to know out of the way. As a glaucoma doc, one of my favorite things about this drop is that it's only taken once a day. And this is actually really great for glaucoma patients because this means that the compliance is typically pretty good. Compliance means that patients are pretty good about taking their medication and they don't forget to take their medication. And of course, when you don't forget to take your medication, that means your glaucoma typically stays under good control. I will tell patients to just put this eye drop by their bedside and then they can just remember to take it as part of their nighttime routine. Another drop I wanna talk about that is dosed just once daily is a drop called Ropressa. Now there are pros and cons to Ropressa, but the pro is certainly that it is dosed once a day. One of my biggest cons with this drop, even though I do like it as a specialist, is that when it comes to insurance coverage, it can really vary as to whether a patient is gonna be able to get this drop covered or not. So from a clinical perspective, I do really like it, but the problem is coverage. So if a patient has to pay three, $400 every month to get their one medication, and they're probably on other medications too, that is really kind of unreasonable that patients should be expected to pay that. But I will say that in patients who are able to get it covered, it is a really good drop and it has a lot of good effectivity against glaucoma. One other downside to the drop is in some patients it can make the eye red. If the eye is red, sometimes if you stick with it, the eye redness may actually go down. So I will counsel my patients that, hey, if this isn't bothering you too much, stick with the drop for a few more weeks and let's see if the redness goes away. Now let's talk about the eye drops that you take two and sometimes even three times a day. The first drop I wanna to talk to you about is called Timolol. This is one of the oldest glaucoma medications and it has been used for many, many years. So there's a lot of data behind it. It typically has a yellow top and that's how you'll know it's Timolol. And it's typically very well tolerated when it comes to ocular side effects, which means means that it doesn't really make the eye red 
and patients don't really have any major eye side effects. The downside to this drop is that it does typically have to be dosed twice a day, but in some cases, it can actually be dosed just once a day. Now, one of the biggest issues with Timolol is that because it's a beta blocker, we will often ask patients if they have any asthma or breathing issues or any major heart problems that affect their heart rhythm, because in very rare cases, some of that Timolol can actually get into your bloodstream. It is not common because the amount of drop that you put in your eye, very little of it actually gets into your bloodstream but some people are more sensitive than others. So if it does get into the bloodstream in these sensitive patients, it can cause issues with coughing and asthma exacerbation. And if patients start to feel lightheaded or experience anything else strange, I always tell them to stop the drop. Typically, I won't even put patients on this drop at all if they have those conditions, but in some cases, patients who don't have these conditions can still experience some weird symptoms. So I always tell patients when they're trying a new drop to be hyper aware of any new symptoms or strange symptoms that they're having. Now let's talk about an eye drop called bromonidine. Bromonidine typically comes in a purple top. It is the generic name for another drug called Alphagan. And this is typically done two times a day, but it can be prescribed in some patients up to three times a day. Some glaucoma specialists like to use it over other eye drops because it has what we call neuroprotective qualities, which are benefits aside from just the pressure lowering of the eye. Now the downside with bromonidine is that the allergy rate with this drop can be a little bit higher than other drops. And the weird thing about the allergy is that this allergy can show up months or even years later after you have been successfully taking this drop. So it is a little strange that it would show up later, but it does happen. And in those cases, we do have to take the patient off the drop. Another drop to talk about is something called dorzolamide. This is also dosed typically twice a day. Sometimes you can go up to three times a day and this will have an orange cap, unless it's combined with Timolol, in which case it might have a dark blue cap. Dorzolamide is pretty well tolerated, but some people often say that it really stings going in the eye. But unfortunately, there's really not much to do about that except for just kind of wait till the stinging and burning ends after the drop has been put in. People also report sometimes having a little bit of a metallic taste. I typically tell patients that if it's intolerable, you should let me know and we can talk about other medications. But if it's working to lower the pressure, I often encourage patients to try to stick with it. Now let's talk about combination eye drops. These are eye drops where, as you guessed it, there's two drops in one medication. Typically, Timolol with the yellow cap and bromonidine can be combined together and this will have a blue cap. And also Timolol can be combined with dorzolamide, which will also have a blue cap. You can also get bromonidine and drizolamide together. There are other combinations as well, but these are not very common. And these are the most common combinations that we see in the US. Now, when you go to other countries, there are more combinations and sometimes you can even see three drops together. One pro tip that I have for all patients who have glaucoma is to bring your eye drops, every single one you're on, even whether they're prescription or not prescription, into your eye doctor's visit. This helps us to ensure that there's absolutely no confusion with what you're taking and how often you're taking it. Because if we wanna change your regimen, we wanna make sure that we are all on the same page. Hope you found this helpful. Remember to hit like and subscribe below. And if you have any other questions about glaucoma, let me know in the comments and I'll try to answer it in a future video. Thanks for watching.